Why are you so tense, god damn it? Because I don't know what I'm doing! Calm down. Hello everybody, it's Philly Cuts with another boxing reveal. I'm actually going to do two. First, I'm going to talk about Lucas the Machine Matisse against Lamont Peterson. That was a non-title bout, junior welterweight division. And also the return of Sugar Shane Mosley against Pablo Cesar Cano. All right, first in the Matisse fight, Lucas the Machine Matisse. Oh, my God, did he not destroy Lamont Peterson, who was not chopped meat, buddy. However, you know, his image was tarnished after he did test positive for PEDs, uh, synthetic testosterone, after he won that first fight against Amir Khan and actually ruined the rematch opportunity because he tested positive for that. So really, Lamont Peterson's reputation has been, you know, tarnished, been, you know, kind of compromised because of this. Well, now what is his reputation going to say after this fight? Because... Lucas the Machine Matisse completely, completely obliterated Lamont Peterson with a third round uh, knockout. Um, I mean, Matisse just steamrolled Peterson. Peterson just was outmatched completely. Uh, he first got knocked down in the second round with a nice left hook, kind of belted him on the top of the forehead. And it was sort of like a delayed reaction in Peterson. Um, one of the announcers actually thought that Peterson had tripped, but he no way tripped. It was just kind of like he got hit, got clipped, kind of backed up, and it was like a second or two delay, and then he fell down. Uh, he was able to finish the round, but in round three, the machine kept coming at Peterson, knocked him down twice in that round again with a left hook first a nice compact short left hook that just sent peterson reeling back and reeling he just fell down and back like a tree he got up tried to fight again but the machine kept coming at him and hit him with a nice left right left combo sent peterson back down on his back again and the referee stepped in and stopped it now let me tell you let me put this in perspective for you how powerful of a fighter the machine is now at this point. In his last 11 victories, they've all been via KO or TKO. 32 of his 34 wins have come via KO. And listen to this stat. In his last 12 fights, Lucas the Machine Matisse has had 25 knockdowns. That's right. 25 knockdowns in his last 12 fights. So the guy's averaging a little over two knockdowns per fight. That's unreal, man. That is amazing. People are now comparing him to uh, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, when Manny was in his prime and he was just burning through, being the uh, Mexican assassin and destroying people like Ricky Hatton, too, as well, from England. Uh, this guy is just a beast. This guy is a beast. He's just destroying his competition just via unprecedented power here. And if anyone needs to be worried, it has to be Danny Garcia, who is going to be matching up with him, I guess, early in September of this year. Uh, Danny Garcia was present in the crowd, and uh, I think he looked a little scared. I think he looked a little worried. I mean, this guy is the real deal. This isn't, uh, you know, some crusty old... Uh, Zab Judah, who Zab Judah did actually beat Matisse, but it's controversial, so could have went one way or the other on that fight for the machine, but I think Garcia's got lots to worry about here. I mean, this is uh, going to be a really, really tough fight, a really tough fight for Danny Garcia, and uh, his father was noticeably silent in the crowd as well. You know, you, you, we all know that uh, Angel Garcia... Uh, Danny's father there has probably the biggest mouth in boxing and, you know, a lot of people don't like him because of that. I mean, he's such a, such a trash talker, you know. So that should be really, really something to look forward to. The next fight was the return of Sugar Shane Mosley against, I got to look at his name because I don't really know who this man is, Pablo Cesar Cano from Mexico. I also watched this fight. Uh, it actually took place down in Cancun, so of course, you know, Mexican boxer, Cancun, you're going to have to start to worry about hometown judges. Uh, 
Let's put this into perspective, okay? Sugar Shane Mosley has not won a fight, okay? He's 41 years old. He has not won a fight in over four years. I looked it up. Uh, the last time he won a fight was actually against uh, Margarita. And that was about four years ago. Uh, Shane, you know, I, to his credit, he has fought always top-notch competitors, but he's lost to every top-notch competitor in the last four years. Let me uh, break it down. He's lost to Pacquiao. He lost to Mayweather. He lost to uh, Canelo Alvarez. That was actually his last fight. And he was actually... Uh, 19 years older than Canelo. Uh, Canelo was 21 at the time and mostly 40. In this fight, he was uh, 18 years older than Keno. Uh, 41. Keno is uh, 23, I believe. So, boy, Father Time really, really, really has been taking a toll on Shane's career this past four years. Um, it was a good fight. I mean... But you got to put it into perspective, you know, the kind of fighter Shane Mosley has been. And he has been a great fighter, great career. I mean, Jesus, man, the guy uh, beat Oscar De La Hoya twice. So, I mean, the guy has beaten top-notch opponents. He's always been top flight uh, competitor and always been fun to watch. But at 41 years of age, fighting the relatively unknown Cano, who is, you know, he's an up-and-comer, um, Mosley had a bit of trouble. Uh the fight definitely went the distance. Um, they, there was open scoring in that fight. So I believe prior to the eighth round, two of the judges actually had uh, Cano ahead. And that was highly debatable. I pretty much had Mosley winning this fight from, uh, you know, I felt from the fourth round on, he kind of really took over and was bringing the fight to Cano. Um being more of the aggressor where people thought that Mosley was going to be more of a counterpuncher in this fight, but he actually ended up being the aggressor more, I thought. Still, Cano was able to land a bunch of shots uh, that did send Sugar Shane back reeling a little bit. Um, but overall, it was a good fight, but nonetheless, I mean, this is really somebody in Shane's heyday or even, you know... Two or three years ago, you would think that Shane could have knocked this guy out pretty easily. But such is the case now. The guy's 41 years old. So you got to ask yourself, you know, Shane, when is enough enough? I mean, how much longer do you think that you guys think he's going to stay in the game? Uh, it's an interesting conversation. But, you know, that happens so much and so often with boxers. I don't even need to get into that with you guys. But... So many boxers stay in past their prime. It's almost like a given for a lot of guys. So, I don't know. I wish you the best, Shane. Congratulations on your first win in over four years. I'll keep watching you. I've always been a fan, and uh, I'll keep watching you, Shane. So, good luck. Best of luck. Hang in there. And I hope to see you, you know, keep earning victories. All right, guys. It's been Philly Cuts. Another boxing review. I'm looking forward to the Paulie Malignaggi. I hope I said that. I always say that guy's name wrong. Paulie Malignaggi against the Adrian Broner fight coming up. I believe it's June 22nd. I will be doing a preview of that fight and also a review. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Philly Cuts. Peace.